good afternoon. Uh, you are welcome to our round table for, to artificial limbs, to uh, prosthetic surgery, and we will have three presenters uh, who will talk about different aspects of uh, this sphere, and you will be able to ask uh, some questions to them, short questions uh, after each uh, presentation, and the main discussion will be in the end, at, at the end when we uh, when we be presenting our over. Uh, my name is Daniel Medvedev. My uh, ad device, I'm a cyborg, a cyborg, and my device is near here. And I would like to introduce the first presenter, uh, Ilya Chekh, the founder and the general director of the Waste Robotic Groups, uh, which already work in the sphere of uh, artificial limbs. And Ilya, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. I will start uh, with this certain ABCs in the sphere of uh, prosthetic surgeries. Uh, at the very beginning of our project, uh, we, my company made a question to itself, in which way we can uh, help to the people with the limited capabilities, what problems are in Russia, and we selected three main problems. Uh, the absence of uh, the active children processes because uh, until the age of uh, uh, the, the until the age of uh, 12 uh, we don't have the active processes and uh, the limited number of uh, people who can receive uh, the processes we started our project with the problem of uh, the processes for children the active uh, processes uh, of uh, fingers for the children. You see one of the first prototypes of our company. We have already three patients and we prepare the processes for the certification and for the massive sales. Uh, sorry, my video doesn't function properly. The processes works uh, through the, active, the activities of uh, the joint of the hand joint, and he activates the connections with the processes. And the, the version of the prototype type is as this. And at the beginning of the next year, we plan to put uh, to market already our uh, prototype. We have three uh, patients with whom uh, we develop our uh, prototypes. So Ksusha of four years. Uh, is uh, uh, using our processes. Uh, we can install our processes starting three or four years. Uh, for example, we are talking about the wrist proce uh, processes. And uh, so that uh, when uh, the child is grown up, he would be able to use uh, the processes actively. Daniel, our second patient, is here present. Uh, I want to invite him here. We installed the processes to Daniel uh, half a year ago. They came to the city from Saratov to our forum. We replaced uh, his uh, processes. Uh, the previous version, uh, he, uh, he grew over his previous version. And uh, the key uh, specific feature of our process uh, for ch uh, processes of our children is that they need uh, that the processes is replaced every five to four or five months. And uh, in fact, uh, our processes is uh, not very expensive and uh, it allows to change it two or three times a year. Daniel, please show how it functions. So you can see that the wrist and then the wrist uh, joint um, is uh, replicated and uh, Daniela can play uh, with uh, toys and he can uh, pull uh, the girls uh, in school, etc. Please uh, take your seat. Uh, this phase of the project is already at this uh, final stage. At the end of this year, we plan to obtain the declaration of uh, compliance and uh, we plan to go to the next stage, uh, the development of the multifunctional bionic prosthesis. 
and uh, in uh, this year we're going to install it already to our first patient. These are the exclusive uh, pictures of the tuning up uh, of our prosthesis. Uh, two specific features of uh, uh, this prosthesis is the system of uh, management and uh, functioning. Uh, it is uh, not simply based on the trigger sensors, but uh, the special bracelet which is placed on the on uh, the lower part of uh, the arm and uh, in this uh, version of the prototype uh, the system of management can recognize up to six gestures and uh, later we plan to teach uh, the uh, the system on the basis of the uh, specialists of the technical university and this is uh, the idea is uh, to teach the system uh, to at the level of uh, the re reflectorial movements now uh, the the management of the processes at present is necessary that the patient think uh, thinks what he want to do uh, but if we have the artificial intelligence management, uh, when the patient come, uh, comes to us, we take the measures from the patient uh, arm, for example, and uh, we place uh, uh, the patient into the virtual reality so that uh, he can uh, learn how uh, that uh, this patient has uh, a limb and he can communicate and interact with his uh, new artificial limb. Among our, uh, in, uh, our team includes uh, robot technics and uh, the manufacturing managers. Uh, me and Vladimir, uh, we are the specialists in robot techniques and uh, Vadim is uh, the uh, the developer of the robot techniques and uh, his team is uh, of, uh, Im among the top 30 of uh, the developers of robot techniques and Vladimir Romyantsev is one of the founders of the Cane Touch and this is a special uh, additive technology a process the surgery is uh, just a start of our big company. Our company will be uh, related to the all kind of uh, medical robot techniques and everything which uh, goes together with this. We are going to develop uh, exoskeletons and um, re restoration of um, the patients after the strokes, after the road accidents, etc. We are going to uh, work on the introduction of different sensors uh, into the human body, which will follow the state of the uh, human body. And our approach is that we try to solve the problems of uh, the disabled persons uh, uh, in the integrated way, because now uh, the uh, there is a big gap between the surgeon who cuts the limb of a person and the robot technic and the technician who restore the limb and we want to connect these two professionals if a person gets uh, a trauma a, ca a casualty as a result of uh, the, uh, an accident and uh, uh, his uh, limb will be amputated uh, the person the patient will know already what kind of prosthesis he will obtain and the surgeon will know, will understand how to do the amputation in the correct way so that uh, a patient could manage his prosthesis in the, uh, in the most comfortable way. Uh, this is a big gap not only in Russia but in the world in general and we try to solve this issue uh, to the maximum. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ilya. And uh, if uh, you can ask now the questions to Ilya, and uh, uh, do we have the microphone for the audience? If uh, if anything, uh, we can share the microphones. We have a spare microphone. Please, your question. 
Ilya, good afternoon. We know each other with Ilya because it happens so that he is uh, uh, my neighbor in the hotel. Uh, we uh, come from Engine Generation Next uh, competition. Ilya already does not participate in it. And in fact, my comment is not a question. I just want to express praise to your project. And uh, the child came to the stage and he smiled. And the smile in itself like this uh, of a good-looking boy who is happy with his life uh, costs uh, billions or even it doesn't have any price. And I want to wish uh, luck and success to you. And if anything, I'm ready to help you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ilya. My question is as follows. Uh, this uh, project, uh, what kind of uh, investments it involves? Uh, you do have any state support or whatever? At the zero stage uh, of the project is done uh, just at the expense of the founders of the project. We haven't attracted any investments. But uh, we are now looking for the funding because we are uh, looking for the new kind of uh, bionic projects, uh, bionic prosthesis, and we are looking for funding. So that uh, even the fund of uh, support of the innovations uh, is not involved yet. I know that this foundation support uh, uh, the projects of this kind. Indeed, we are analyzing now the foundations to whom, uh, whom we can address, and we, start, we begin to prepare the documents. And the second question refers to the design and the appearance of this uh, prosthesis. Indeed, uh, you have a long way to go. Do you have any intentions to improve the appearance, to make it more aesthetic, looking, uh, well, to improve the similarity to uh, real uh, limbs? Yes, indeed, this is an interesting question because uh, according to the questions uh, uh, and surveys of the European uh, psychologists and uh, specialists, uh, the people treat more and more uh, nicely uh, the prosthesis. Uh, in fact, uh, we are going to work uh, on the high-tech prosthesis and uh, the ergonomics of uh, this uh, prosthesis. And uh, indeed, uh, this is a high-tech device, and this is, will be a uh, reason to boast, actually, for the patients. I would like to ask the question about the cost. How much? How, how important is for you the costs, and what is your uh, cost threshold? Should it be uh, uh, cheaper or should it be high tech and uh, compare it with the international costs and the uh, international market uh, values? As to the uh, child prosthesis, it must be as cheap as possible because you have to replace it to change it two or three. Uh, times a year, and so for uh, for an age of Daniel, it will be about fifteen uh, thousand rubles, and for a younger age, uh, it will be ten to twelve uh, thousand rubles. And for bionic uh, prosthesis, uh, this will depend on the quota uh, uh, prepared by the medical authorities for different regions. Our idea is to apply the most uh, um, uh, as much as possible uh, to these quarters so that it's not it will be not only for the rich people but uh, so that any person could afford this of course we will uh, have different versions uh, some will be cheaper and the others will be compared with the foreign uh, and uh, analogs but uh, we will compare it with the quarters of the federal medical agencies. Uh, good afternoon, Lia. I am Ladlin. I am just a private person. And you mentioned that this is uh, uh, 
Jedi special. Uh, this is a special uh, processes. Uh, it is it is based on the idea. It is based on the idea of the traction. Uh, yes, we have uh, this. Uh, so far, we use the processes of uh, the traction processes of the fingers. But if we talk about the hand uh, processes as uh, 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 complete processes, this will be the rotation, the movement uh, back and forth, up and down, etc. And this uh, will be implemented through the mechanical uh, technologies, or we will have server engines or whatever. The present version, for example, uh, the one which Daniel has, this there is just the traction uh, movement uh, to teach the child uh, to interact with the environment and to train the muscles so that they, the muscles do not lose the, their functionality. And we're not going to specialize in uh, traction processes. And uh, we will work on bare me me mechanics, etc. You know better than the others the situation in the industry. You showed the scheme of the development uh, of uh, your company. Do you? In what time do you plan to have uh, the prototypes of more sophisticated processes? Uh, processes uh, by the beginning of 2016, and the gap between uh, your project and uh, the projects of uh, American, for example. Uh, uh, Ripo Bionics, uh, are they far in advance uh, compared with you? Uh, yes, they are uh, ahead of us, but they are not far from us, not in the mechanical size, but uh, they are far ahead of us in uh, from the point of view of management and managing the uh, processes uh, because uh, uh, they uh, are based on the invasive uh, uh, placement of uh, the sensors. And in this sense, they are far ahead of any Russian developer. And as to the kinematics, the movement of the hand, uh, it is not possible to invent uh, something new. So we plan to make the accent to put the accent on uh, the development of the invasive sensors and uh, where uh, we're going to work on the implantable sensors and as to the, the uh, production uh, what kind of laboratories you use uh, for the uh, uh, manufacturing of this of your processes uh, the developer of the project uh, the Kantach uh, company it has uh, a wide it has wide uh, possibilities and uh, um, capabilities for the development of uh, these materials polyamides uh, polymers and uh, for the moment uh, we have the manufacturing base for about 2000 units per year but in the future we can involve uh, russian manufacturers and chinese manufacturers and uh, uh, we are going to use 3d printing uh, not only at the rn d phase but this will be casting or the printing of uh, metal printing for the constructive elements of the processes in the first year uh, 2015 and the second year 2016 we plan to use our own capacities and in the future we plan not to expand our capacities but we're going to place the orders uh, with the Russian manufacturers or the Chinese manufacturers uh, thank you one more question and we will then pass to the new вариантов управления и вживляемых. С учетом того, что детские протезы меняются там примерно три раза в год, вживляемую часть необходимо будет менять. 
uh, only for grown-ups, uh, for grown-up users, uh, because for kids, uh, it is too difficult to change uh, uh, the prosthesis three times a year. And this is not the way out. So we are not going to deal with kids' invasive prosth prosthetic surgery. So in Berkeley, there is a scientist uh, who just uh, of, uh, makes an implant uh, for uh, bees, you know, beetles. Uh, so uh, it uh, made me thinking uh, to implant uh, the prosthesis before the kid is born. So uh, even if uh, the kid is not born yet, so we'll, he'll probably need it further. So I'd like to give a slot to Renzo Zanchiri from the company. Uh, company uh, uh, value biotech dealing with intel uh, artificial intel intellectual uh, intellectual systems and he will uh, tell us uh, the difference of this intellectual uh, prosthesis from the mechanic ones and how they can be developed uh, so thank you very much again Daniel uh, let us welcome him again And uh, let me remind you again that we, uh, any one of us will probably need an artificial limb. So, and uh, uh, coming back home from the open innovations, let us uh, do our best uh, to prevent this theme uh, be stopped from development. So. Uh, let us let all people with disabilities uh, stop thinking they are going to be disabled for their whole life. Let us uh, let them consider it a challenge which is going to be solved uh, very soon. So, Renzo, the floor is yours. Renzo, the floor is yours. You can start, please. Uh, it's important to uh, understand that uh, in, in artificial intelligence is uh, the ability of the software or to do something that uh, is, is not be programma programmable from the software, from the so software engineering. It's the uh, ability to change the, the, the mode to work or the aspect. Uh, by self, itself, by the software. <laughs> okay. Just uh, two, two words about uh, my company. is uh, Value by Tech is a very small company that is uh, located in Milano, Italy. At the, in the, in the, in the inside, the Niguarda Hospital is a big uh, hospital in, in, in Italy and uh, into the IMS Academy. The IMS Academy is uh, uh, the academy for uh, uh, teaching or uh, use a new technology for a mini-invasive surgery. The Value Biotech have the main uh, activity or the goal to uh, realize uh, mini invasive uh, single port robots practically change the actual uh, technology to the to use uh, like a da vinci is uh, or similar that is a is a robot uh, using uh, in a surgery to substitute the the doctor the surgeon with one robot that is put inside the atom or inside the patient. My history, just to understand why it's very difficult to realize prosthesis or working in the software or in mechanical or in mechatronics, I start by some physical study, implement hardware, software, and arrive to intelligent device to develop it and understand also the rule, uncover the rule to develop before 
and uh, at the end uh, found uh, two companies. One is Mechatronics Lab, is a company to realize a specific mechatronics device, also for medical, but also for industrial. Intelligent or very, very small one. And now I found uh, with uh, more people, uh, Value Biotech. All this, uh, the robot, uh, or uh, to realize artificial prothesis or uh, bionics, uh, how you do want, is necessary to have a very high technology actuator or sensor, industrial technology, industrial uh, production, because it's not uh, enough to realize in laboratory, but it's necessary to realize with a low cost, high, high production, and so on. It's necessary in a, in a good part, intelligent uh, or smart software, and uh, the medical device will be device in surgical and assistant, or prosthesis is uh, in the middle. My group uh, is composed from, uh, from one doctor, uh, myself, uh, one businessman, and one mechanical engineer. And uh, the academy, IMS, is a, is a financier. There are a very small but a very good uh, team of a very young uh, engineering engineer is uh, for more discipline because for develop uh, a prosthesis or a medical robots uh, is necessary no mechanical, physical, electronics, communication, uh, design because the robot will be will be used and uh, also will be put in the real world is. Uh, the one thing of a prosthesis will be a good prosthesis, also for looking, or not just for func functionality. Uh, to complement uh, the group, there are uh, an association that is uh, found uh, from uh, is a non-profit association for the for hide to develop uh, uh, biomedical uh, technology generally. Also, for example, one project. Uh, that I you explained before. Mechatronics and uh, Micro Machine is an is external company that uh, supply the technology to realize uh, the, some, some part in the robots generally. The prosthesis uh, is uh, okay. There are, there are prosthesis for leg, for arms, for uh, any type of, uh, of part of the body, but uh, is, uh, is very complicate or will be done very, very high number of tasks. One, uh, one problem is that the human body is a very high freedom degree of, of uh, liberty. It's possible to move uh, in, uh, in very, very many modes. Will be useful and also agreeable. agreeable. Good, uh, good to, to see, or uh, don't put uh, necessary to have uh, a good feeling in a, with uh, people that uh, you have uh, near, because in some cases not so so easy, and uh, will be very sensible, or is uh, will be capable to change from heavy job to very light job. For. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, take a very, very simple uh, action, is uh, get up from the chair. Any people go this uh, every time. But uh, from start, from uh, one position to uh, uh, other position, there are very, very more complex tasks for any device. This job is done from physical devices, a prosthesis very, very, exactly the prosthesis that is mechanical or electronics or is well defined from a mathematical point of view or, uh, or by the law of the controls. There are uh, the software that is very, very important, the software, because it's uh, the, trade, the, the union, the, the, the bridge between mechanical and uh, action. And uh, there are uh, a very important uh, Things is uh, the environment variable or the the space that you live. 
you can uh, use a chair uh, very high, very low, very soft, very hard. The prosthesis technically must work in any case. Uh, the actual prosthesis is very high limitation, uh, have very high limitation. Is a, is a chair will be a, a, a good for a, for a prosthesis and so on. In the future, I, I think in this presentation for 20 years, 50 years, not tomorrow. And uh, it's very important because uh, the prosthesis have two big areas. One uh, GNO area is a mechanical or physical area, and a total GNO area is an environment that uh, the people use the prosthesis. One big issue is uh, any mechatronics device uh, is typically positioning control, or in any case, is very dependent from the from the sensor, and the sensor typically take information about the position. If you want to stay, stay in one position, the control working in uh, know exactly the position. The one art or one prosthesis is normal perceptive. It uh, depends uh, of the uh, environment. I take my, my, my arm here, but uh, if some people uh, uh, over are some, uh, some, some uh, disturb, I move, but it's not controlled in position. If I close my ear, my A, and I wait uh, one minute, ten minutes, my my arm will go back, go go down. It's normal. In a in a mechatronics device, the arm is still still here all the day. Okay, I more or less finish. Is uh, on the mechatronics device, uh, the system is controlled by le le physical law, and is, uh, the command is uh, very precise. Move uh, 10 degrees, uh, apply one kilo, and so on. From the prosthesis, uh, the control is uh, depend uh, day by day, changing, continuous, and uh, is the command is uh, typically a nerve or a a stimulus on a different uh, different source that is the same of the language. You must understand that who the, the brain won't, won't ask. The mechanical don't change with the time. The body or the prosthesis evolve day by day. The example before, the age in a, in a, in a very baby situation must be changed because uh, the body increase, but also in an uh, adult uh, uh, human uh, have the same problem because uh, you learn to think some things. At the end, uh, is uh, one prosthesis will be a, one intelligent device or self-learning uh, and uh, normally will be done with uh, very small material and uh, some small material is already GNO, some uh, small material must be understand. The basic uh, is uh, for one prosthesis uh, at the end uh, there are one human side and one machine side. The human side is practically the communication with brain and uh, with uh, the environment. The machine side is practically the actuators and the sensor and drive. One uh, important thing uh, is also the safety and the energy, because it's not enough to uh, have a very small mechanical, very small device, but the, the intelligence of the device is necessary also to have enough power to realize uh, the situation. If uh, one people run fast before and uh, slower at the end. The use uh, of uh, in artificial intelligence is necessary practically for this region. The environment is very changeable. It is not possible to understand how you found after the door. The command will be interpreted, will be understand from the brain, from the muscle, from the electrical uh, stimulus, and so on. 
the software must be, must be learned day by day because uh, the pathology will be different, uh, the, the body change uh, every day, will be fat or not, and uh, at the end, uh, help also for the tuning uh, of the controllers, for, for help uh, the mechanical of the physical device. This is a uh, four region, four uh, point uh, that the artificial intelligence will be used inside the, the prothesis in a new generation. And it's a big problem because when you change uh, the, uh, the size of, uh, of the art, uh, you must uh, remember more or less all that you are learning before. In a, in a static device, you can change the device with a new one and uh, no problem to learning. In a, in a, when you su substitute the art, uh, if uh, the system is not intelligent, must be learned to to beginning, for example, or the, or the patent will be uh, to be a uh, uh, learn to to new movement or uh, new system. Okay, practically the evolution is uh, very simple. More or less, all the part of the body will be changed or we will be done with prothesis, uh, electrical, mechanical, or uh, with uh, special material. The needs for the developer or for the company is uh, material, hardware, sensor, firmware, software, information technology, sociality, social uh, point of view, industrialize, and service and maintenance, because it's like have a, a car. You can uh, uh, go in garage to, to, see, to adjust something, it's a mechanical thing. I work uh, on uh, the new sensor, the intelligence algorithm, uh, I parallel computing in a very small device or in very small low power device. The, the power of a prothesis is a very big problem and also for industrial process, because it's important to realize uh, something that... Uh, uh, Value by Tech is not a research uh, company, it's an in industrial company that sells something. In details, uh, working in, uh, in a robot in Value by Tech, uh, in uh, microtronics labs, uh, and uh, in micro-precision in a different uh, part of technology. At the end, uh, remember that uh, to reach the goal, is a reference also for a young uh, uh, engineering, engineering typically. The R&D group will be very, very bigger. Not one people can do all that I explained before. The investor is a welcome double. If uh, you are not investor, at uh, looking at idea is impossible to arrive in any place. And uh, the, 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 the develop of a prothesis is practically multidisciplinary, must be international, must be a big network of a research institute, must be more than one small company involved in the project. Is, a, is, a, is a important also there are big company in the project and there are needs more and more pioneers or people that you invest night and day in the, in the project. I think in the platea, or uh, I have two examples, I think so, in the, my table. <laughs> Just to remember, is, uh, this is uh, all the part that uh, will be changed in the, in the body, but uh, one ask is, uh, okay, artificial organs, small, small, uh, smart uh, prothesis, uh, gen uh, genetic engineering, organ regeneration, and when I replace my 95% of my body, I still human or uh, I am machine? I don't know. Thanks. I don't know if uh, reach a time or not. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much. At the last slide, we saw the illustration of. Uh, of the magazine cover of the 1999. 
And I remember that this year there was a documentary on the TV when all the artificial parts which exist uh, were put together and somebody and the authors uh, tried to put them together and to make something the, uh, functioning. And indeed, uh, this uh, has very small difference to that picture. And indeed, everyone uh, can become a pioneer in this sphere as a developer or somebody can try yourself as a patient. And a small question to somebody. Somebody tried ever an artificial uh, uh, organ, artificial part of uh, the body. Well, indeed, I myself tried in a, lab in a U.S. laboratory artificial arm, which uh, is controlled by the muscles. And uh, it took me only a few minutes to understand how to move uh, my hand, uh, the fingers. Probably you don't need this, but our other presenter, Ekaterina, uh, will explain that those people who probably uh, do not need uh, any artificial uh, extremities and uh, limbs, but uh, there are some people uh, who probably need processes. And you can ask some questions to Renzo. Uh, please explain at what stage uh, is your project? in this moment uh, to the robotic surgery. To realize a robotic surgery, I need uh, more procedure with uh, intelligence artificial in inside. I don't work in the prosthesis in this moment because uh, the company is very small, is uh, focused uh, just in the robot. My explanation is related for my contact with all my group of develop and uh, uh, more people in the world develop uh, on this technology, but uh, I think the stage is uh, very near to the research and very, very far to the industrial. Because it's, uh, it's uh, also to, to, pu to put uh, in, uh, in, uh, in production uh, the art, the, the, the hand that I see before, it needs, I think, five years, ten years, more or less. And it's a relatively uh, easy prosthesis. But the end is very, is very complicated, but seems uh, finished, but in re, uh, at, the re, at the real uh, is uh, in the beginning. Uh, Thank you. Спасибо за вопрос. Thank you for your question. And now a very scary uh, presentation, presentation, because uh, Ekaterina is not only uh, is related to prosthetics, but uh, but she is uh, a marketing person and salesperson. So if somebody resists the desire to buy a, a prosthesis, um, and uh, Ekaterina is the founder of uh, the Exo <coughs> Athlete company, and this is related to exoskeleton. So those who uh, know uh, the structure of the insects. They know, they know that exoskeleton is outside in insects. And uh, now I helped Ekaterina to start. And your turn now, uh, dear colleagues, the, I will tell you about the exoathlete project. It was started uh, one year ago when my partner and I joined uh, and formed uh, the scientific team. Our scientific team are the scientists from uh, the Moscow University who worked in robototechnics for many years. But as you know, in our, uh, uh, among our scientists, uh, uh, brilliant ideas appear, but it is very rarely that they come to the implementation. But in this case, uh, Two moons or two suns appeared on the on the sky, uh, and uh, on one hand, uh, this uh, was a, um, a point when uh, the team was uh, ready to reconsider the approach because before they had been working with uh, they had been working uh, for. Uh, uh, emergency agency, 
and um, uh, the, uh, me and my uh, my partner, we worked uh, in for 15 years in different companies. I worked in, for example, in a big uh, automotive retailer, and uh, Mikhail was working in the BBK company. We trusted our scientific team, and our project started. Why it is exoathlete? First, exo is external, and athlete is some somebody strong. This is a project for uh, the people with strong will, for the people who lost their activity, who lost their uh, movement of their legs. Please turn off the sound. This is Denise, and uh, eight year, years ago he received uh, eight uh, bullet shots f from the thieves in his uh, own apartment. He spent in the wheelchair eight uh, years, and now he is testing exoathlete. For him, the exoathlete is the way to return to his previous way of life and uh, the possibility to become independent and. Uh, get self-assurance. For him, the exo-athlete is a kind of new life, and this is what we're working for. I will tell you a few words about uh, the robototechnics. In uh, medicine, uh, it was an eye-opener for me that every year the number of procedures with the use of robotics is increasing 40% each year. It means that robototechnics uh, interferes and uh, penetrates the medicine quite actively. And it is used not only in uh, surgery, but in rehabilitation as well. Why it is very important. In the United States, more than 140,000 strokes are registered in the United States. And uh, one of the methods of rehabilitation is mechanotherapy. This is the way uh, to for the stroke affected patients to restore their movements because uh, and as a result of the robotic mechanotherapy therapy uh, me, robotic mechano, mechanotherapy helps a patient to restore his movement and it is quite efficient from the neurological point of view. According to the research in the United States, each six person uh, after the stroke can return to the independent movement. Uh, this minimizes the after effects of uh, the stroke. And in uh, 15 years, uh, the forecast is that the uh, persons uh, at the age of 80 will be twice as uh, many, and uh, the people uh, with the uh, at the age of 60 will be reduced in 40 percent. So you, you see that the population of Earth is getting more old, and exoskeletons will be quite developed and quite uh, quite normal, quite frequent. And this will give the possibility for the aged persons to move individually, independently, and to and to be self-assured. Mechanotherapy now is used in uh, traumatology, in orthopedy, and uh, neurology. And our exoskeleton is oriented at this uh, lines. Exo Exoathlet uh, is created in uh, collaboration with the Federal Medical and Biological Ex uh, Agency and Igor Prianikov, the a main rehabilitation doctor believes it. We have uh, regulations and approaches towards it. Number one, somebody having nothing to do with medicine creates uh, the uh, technical task, and uh, so the product becomes cheap uh, and is not good for the medical the people. So. But uh, there is another approach when the product is created in combination of, uh, of just uh, the professionals and those who can do it. 
So this is our approach, our style, and we hope that uh, the uh, doctors will use and improve during their everyday work. So we are very proud to be working together. The Russian uh, market is very, say, interesting. 10% of our population are people with disabilities, and this means 13 million people. Of them, 10% use the wheelchairs, so 1.5 million people use the wheelchairs. Of them, uh, 460,000 are those who uh, who will uh, our first uh, uh, exathlete help. So they will uh, use it on the everyday basis uh, for improvement uh, and verticalization of their muscles. They will have improvement uh, in uh, urological problems, in muscular problems. So all in all, they will be much healthier physiologically. Besides, every day we have a lot of uh, car road accidents and strokes. So uh, so many people uh, get to hospitals of them. So uh, more than two and a half thousand people uh, get uh, well, get into the category of this, uh, people with disability every year. So these are people who re require new trends for rehabilitation, for improvement their lifestyle. What is there in the uh, on the market here? Three exoskeletons. Revoke is uh, the most finalized product certified uh, in uh, Europe and in the USA. And this year it has appeared in uh, IPO and so $400 million is, uh, the, uh, is the revenue. So uh, they, so IPO is uh, the form for investment. Exabionics is another project, which is developing as a scientific program created by several laboratories. It was based on the military exoskeletal, and it was ordered by the military development. So in 70 clinics of uh, Europe and USA, uh, this exoskeletal is uh, uh, having, um, is being in the uh, different clinical stages. Uh, so another one. Uh, very happy, heavy. It looks like Robert and looks like Robert, but uh, it can uh, fall down uh, if it gets any hindrance. But uh, the human is inside, uh, and the person is fixed on the robot. Uh, has the balance. So the price starts uh, from uh, $100,000, uh, well, 100, uh, $180,000 is the price, which is very expensive for here. So we decided to reduce uh, this uh, price uh, due to the new materials because the, f and the final price was is 20 uh, thousand dollars which is quite comfortable to middle class car so I've uh, talked a lot to paralyzed people and uh, they told me well for you healthy people uh, well a car is very important but for us exo athlete is much more important than a car because it takes us uh, more strength to get to the car and so we are ready to participate in some loan programs, insurance programs. We will be happy. Any opportunity of getting exo athlete uh, for uh, of twenty thousand uh, dollars. So we had several patent service in the years 2018 and 13, and we've studied this patent environment. 
So what did we conclude? Uh, patent is protection. But uh, anal having analyzed the market, we understood the prices which are affordable for clinics and for people. We have some technical solutions and we have the understanding how to create a new system for rehabilitation, for professional rehabilitation in inpatients and outpatients clinic. Uh, the data should be stored uh, and because people would uh, come again to clinics and so they are to see uh, the improvement at each stage of improvement. So the data should be stored. Besides, we work with the uh, with Budenka Institute for Neurosurgery and uh, academician Patapov is highly interested in exoskeletal, in uh, it's being managed by the human brain. So this is the idea he cultivates. So, uh, so this program should uh, substitute uh, the work of the human brain producing motion. So today we can uh, read uh, three or four, say, Tim's, uh, sit down, stand up, uh, start movement, but these are just terms. But the target is to go deeper into the human brain, what is now uh, uh, possible only implanting more than 20 needles into the human brain, the electrodes. And this is the work which is going to be conducted by neurologists, neurosurgeons, and, rehabilit uh, and uh, rehabilitation doctors. So what do we have today? Exoathlete type 2. Uh, now we're at the preclinical stage only. So electromyogram and electroneurostimulation will be part of it, and that will be a professional version for, for the use in clinics to stimulate the human muscles in the very phase when they are to contract naturally. So to analyze it and to understand when this and that should start working. And this is a new opportunity for the uh, medical people to uh, find out new ways. Uh, well, drivers, uh, so estimating the uh, tightness, fatigue, uh, the, well, the quality of movements, and we estimate the possibilities of the brain uh, to to drive the movement. So, but this is today for analyzing. We don't. We are not planning for today to use the human brain uh, to go manage it. It is easier to press the button, say stand up. Uh, so uh, 10 uh, billion rubles a year uh, is the amount of, mo of money for mechanical therapy uh, clinics spend every year. Uh, two and a half billion uh, wheelchairs and mechanisms uh, as, uh, are, to, are spent on the equipment. So in five, so we're going to start occupying about 10% of the market in 10 years. So this is our team, the scientific supervisor, uh, Ekaterina Pismenova, uh, and Pavel Komarov, a very talented uh, uh, engineer, uh, creating and uh, working out uh, something which seems incompatible, and it works. Um, the managing program, uh, Michael Grindishev and me, uh, I have um, an MBE on marketing. So, and I think we are to create the products which are, can be sold as they are. Then marketing is marketing and not uh, PR. So I really believe that uh, in uh, several years, uh, we'll have exoskeletons in the parks, uh, so, uh, uh, the same way where there are bicycles today. And any person with problems uh, will come and can be used and can use the exoskeletal. And I love this kind of future. Do you? Thank you, Catherine. 
uh, we've saved uh, time, so we have 20 minutes for discussion. So you can uh, ask uh, uh, any speakers. Let's start uh, with uh, Catherine, please. And use uh, the microphones, please. So I actually uh, think uh, legs and feet are overrated. So I prefer driving a car. But there is an uh, organization, uh, a fund, I think, in uh, uh, the United States uh, where cars, uh, which buy cars and re-equip them for people with disability. And this is much less expensive. So they get the system. Uh, they can be used, they can use uh, for much faster movement than uh, exoskeletal can be. So just uh, they can be different approach. What is more important, uh, the feet, legs, the skeleton or cars? I have some commentaries uh, for, uh, about the people, for example, who uh, will, uh, suffered uh, the trauma in their neck. Uh, and uh, we explained that uh, <coughs> why do you need the exoskeleton? Uh, because there are different ways of uh, to put yourself vertical, but uh, these patients answer that they will get the pleasure of walking. And we understand that we walk together with the exoskeleton. Yeah, this is a, a real pleasure. And for me, a pleasure is to go with the wheels. And it is very interesting that uh, the exoskeletons could appear in the parks. And somebody saw the World Football Cup in, from Brazil. And do you remember who made the first uh, strike at the ball? Those who haven't seen this, Jordan Pinto was paralyzed. Uh, he was the patient uh, in exoskeleton. Uh, he is paralyzed. He uh, during the opening ceremony he made a few steps and made the first strike. Maybe no, uh, not many people paid attention to this, but this is can be quite a natural story. The people who need uh, external devices, they could be among us uh, for those for deaf people who could need uh, the implants. Uh, uh, and uh, some other people, disabled persons, could be could need uh, exoskeleton, and if we, it can be placed in one of the parks to public use, this would be very nice. And as to the athletes, uh, I would like to ask uh, Ilya's commentary because uh, somehow with the, your external devices, you are related to some kind of uh, competition. Yes, indeed, we are going to participate in one of the competitions in 2016. Uh, there will be the first competition ski bathlon. This is a Paralympic Games for disabled persons who are using high-tech uh, rehabilitation devices. And the difference from the traditional Paralympics is that the sportsmen are very limited in uh, the technologies and the characteristics and specifications of uh, the devices. And as to key battle this can be, uh, there are no limitations. This uh, can be a pilot device or a serious device. And uh, the only thing is, that it, well, and it should not even uh, have uh, the FDA approval certificate. It can be completely experimental pilot version. And this will be very remarkable because in the next uh, decade it can become a place where uh, the most modern uh, technologies and devices will be tested and demonstrated from the point of view of uh, uh, prosthesis. The competition will take have uh, will have six uh, fields. This will be the driving in narrow interfaces, uh, the prosthesis for the upper limbs, limbs for the near limbs, and uh, for narrow interfaces, uh, there could be some kind of uh, races uh, like uh, Need for Speed or whatever. And then uh, the wheel uh, chairs will with completely. Uh, automatic uh, control. It will show the uh, the speed characteristics, uh, the terrain characteristic, and then the bikes with electrostimulation. 
it allow, uh, this bike allows uh, to a patient with completely paralyzed lower limbs, uh, this patient can uh, go with a bike. And I want to add how the competition uh, in exoskeletons will be organized. Uh, there will be a small uh, there will be small steps like at the children playground and the patient in exoskeletons must be must walk on this uh, steps well uh, the most important is that we it should not look like uh, the competition of uh, the robot cars which went broken uh, immediately after the beginning and uh, you can see on the U YouTube uh, the tennis playing uh, for the disabled persons in wheelchairs. It is very slow, but uh, the sportsmen uh, very pleased with this. And once I said to our scientific team, we are going to participate in the competition, and they said, uh, should uh, the uh, patients extend their legs? And maybe uh, during our session, some people appeared who wanted to uh, obtain an exoskeleton for them. Uh, please raise your hands. Well, uh, okay, we have uh, the questions. Ilya, you said that you are going to do something uh, kind of medical device. It was uh, the fourth column of the first future development of your company. Uh, please, uh, can you explain what is invasive robotics? Invasive uh, in medical uh, terms means implantable. This can be electronic devices, uh, electromechanical uh, units which can be implanted into uh, the hand or arm or uh, leg so that you can make an exoskeleton or internal skeleton, uh, artificial skeleton. It could be kidney or heart or uh, it can be also a pancreas. Uh, and speaking about senses, state of the art uh, it was in Germany this year. Uh, body hacker made a device uh, similar to a smartphone, he implanted it into his arm. And this shows a very interesting specific feature of uh, keyboardization. Medicine in the present form and the medical regulation, regulatory activities uh, make it uh, very slow because even a plastic device, a plastic unit which should be put on the on your arm, it must be approved and certified. And uh, a friend of mine makes uh, the sensors, put the sensors on the T-shirt. But you have to get uh, the you have to get the certification for each sensor. And uh, there is an interesting uh, direction which is called body modification. And uh, I spoke to Maximian Polsky, one of the specialists in this. We are working on the possibility to. Uh, to implant certain s magnetic sensors into your fingers to feel the magnetic fields, or you can go through the magnetic gates uh, in different institutions. So probably uh, all these uh, uh, devices probably it c will be easier if we can avoid certification, be uh, saying that this is not a medical device, this is just uh, an entertainment. Remember uh, how the segways appeared. Uh, the inventor invented uh, the iBoat. Uh, it costed uh, $50,000. Uh, this was a device of, on six wheels, a uh, wheelchair of six wheels. But the consumer device, uh, because it was too expensive, it disappeared. And, uh, but the consumer device uh, remained. And probably those developers who would go through the mass consumer market would be able uh, to make a device of, with a cost of $1,000 who would replace a leg or whatever. And I think that the competition with the non-regulated devices, this is the future.
implantable or uh, not implantable uh, prothesis uh, is a big question because uh, the, actual sta the actual state is just prothesis outside the body and uh, is a very new field also for uh, FDA, for any type of, uh, of certification, I think so. And it's a, it's a second big step of the idea. Because the, the first is uh, make idea and realize. The second is uh, realize following the, the rule or the FDA or a CA certification or so on. This is a big, uh, is a big question and uh, is a, it's very important that is uh, step by step the device uh, increase the number and exit from the competition and go in uh, in the normal market in uh, with uh, uh, the support of the authority because it's necessary to for uh, buy actual pro actual prothesis is necessary spend too much for any people. And uh, it's very important that is this type of device is supported by a public sanity or so on. Are there any things uh, that uh, you, the uh, panel participants, uh, would like to express? Or maybe you would like to comment something else? Well, uh, at present, uh, there is a big interest towards exoskeletons and, and uh, structures. And I spoke to different manufacturers like Nissan, for example. And they asked, uh, why are you involved in this medical devices? The market is very small. Uh, and you can ima you, uh, please uh, look at it. Um, uh, you, uh, you must uh, look at the market and you must make these exoskeletons uh, at the for, for the healthy people, for example, at the manufacturing, uh, you can make a, an exoskeleton for a worker who is working at the at certain machinery. He can uh, send a seat, or for somebody who carry boxes, for example, at the mail office. And we don't have the market for the patients for the medical exoskeletons. But I would like to point out about what uh, Renzo mentioned about uh, wide uh, uh, distribution of the rehabilitation devices. When we learned about Kibatlon, this uh, competition, and we decided that we will participate, we communicated with the organizers and we spoke to them as uh, to their ideology, what they expect from this competition. And the key idea from them was uh, that the healthy people uh, must be shown that this uh, problem exists. In many countries, including Russia, there is a tendency not to notice what uh, that there is uh, somebody next to you, your neighbor. And through this global uh, competition, we can popularize not only the technology, but also uh, the persons, uh, disabled persons with limited capabilities. And uh, we can help to solve their problems, and we can show that they are the same people like you. And uh, through this, we support uh, the Kibatlon organizers. And we want to expand and disseminate this ideology in Russia and in other countries. Thank you very much, Ilya. Maybe other comments or questions very briefly. Somebody wants to say that this is an evil devices, and instead of this, we have to um, uh, listen to religious radio stations, make sermons, etc. Uh, well, of course, um, I'm Vladimir Babkin, and I want to say, well, I try to speak uh, low in a lower voice because I have a very high voice. Well. Uh, my commands uh, uh, concern the certification. If we go from your intellectual heights back to the ground, 
uh, if we talk about the medical devices, it must be only medical devices and uh, the corresponding certification. I will explain why. In uh, the Ekaterina statement, uh, you mentioned the procurement from the state authorities, the social insurance foundation, etc. Uh, High-tech uh, medical assistance, if we imagine uh, the what Daniela mentioned ironically, let's make it uh, industrial. We can throw away uh, this uh, part of the return on investments because the state will not uh, will, will not support this. And lots of what you are going to manufacture will have a double application. It doesn't mean that exoskeletons cannot be used in, uh, in manufacturing, in industries, or maybe in the battlefield, because you saw all these exoskeletons with the guns, uh, but this is something different. Will, this will not improve the life, but will destroy the life. Uh, and uh, and uh, just, I want to add more, the more в любом случае, ну, я так понимаю, что люди, которые здесь собрались, приблизительно об одном и том же думают. Вот. Ну, в общем, вот таким образом, да, никто не исключает, но и еще есть один момент, поскольку я медик, я вам могу сказать, что очень большая работа всем вам предстоит с медицинской средой. Вот. И э, то, что говорил Илья об адаптации вообще врачей для даже выполнения тех же ампутаций, вот, я могу сказать, что действительно э, существует большой разрыв. Многие врачи, особенно когда производят какие-то ампутации по срочным э, показаниям, вообще не думают о том, как будет проводиться дальнейшее ампутирование. Э, делается сейчас ампутация чаще всего по принципу «чем меньше отрежешь», тем лучше как бы, да, но на самом деле это не всегда хорошо для будущего протеза и не исключено, что очень часто... Sometimes the medicals, the, me, the doctors, doctors uh, think that uh, the less you cut, the better. And sometimes the surgeons uh, simply do not uh, know the methods of... Uh, um, medioplastic uh, amputation to support the uh, prosthetic surgery in the future. And uh, another problem that we face is the uh, insufficient uh, financing from on behalf of the state. Uh, we need uh, the financing from, from the state. Probably in Moscow it is a little bit better, but if we talk about Russia in general, the, region ha the regions have different life, in, and uh, these prices of these uh, bionic devices will be exorbitant uh, in the future, and you cannot change this. If we talk about uh, the end of process processes of uh, the different joints or we install different shunts, uh, cardiac sh shunts, and the difference between the Moscow and the regions uh, markets uh, will be like earth and uh, ground. The marketing should be absolutely different. Of course, this is uh, for the future, and the question is only about the timing. Thank you. My name is Alexander Dakimov, and I represent uh, the medical cluster of the Penza region. Uh, this is a uh, Medinsh community, and uh, there are several companies involved in the development and uh, manufacturing of different implants. This includes uh, the Russian Association of uh, the implant manufacturers, and this association was created in particular to promote our interests. First of all, I want to argue a little bit about uh, the insufficient financing. In uh, recently, 
there, are, there appeared a number of uh, programs of state support for medical devices. First of all, through the Polakov-Bortnik Foundation of uh, Cooperation, they have a special uh, department for medical devices. And uh, there is another program which is called START, and it is possible to obtain financing. We already obtained uh, some funding through these associations. Another level is uh, the program at Pharma 2020 of the Ministry of Industry and Trade. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, several tens or th uh, hundreds of millions are invested for the development. And it is also real to obtain this. And it is not one project that uh, is carried out with this financing. And the support from the state is uh, already on. And uh, we, are, we, the developers, must be using it thoroughly. And we have to attract more state financing because we can make this money work because today we have quite a number of infrastructure objects and projects, technoparks throughout the Russia. Uh, these technoparks have the equipment for additive technologies and the special machines which allow to create any device from the idea to the final uh, unit uh, just in uh, several months. And uh, the earlier we start to attract uh, the money and the funding to obtain the prototypes will be the faster we'll get the chance to catch up with the foreign uh, prototypes. And what I would like to add also, you shut the lights on uh, only a small part of uh, the prosthesis which make us closer to the cyborgs. These are the prosthesis of uh, the limbs. But any part, any organ of the human body can be considered for the replacement, starting with the teeth, skin, joints, etc. These are very complicated and sophisticated uh, tasks, and uh, not there is no 100% success in any prosthesis of any part of the human body. And for the future, I want to produce a new idea. We are thinking now in the following direction. There is a very specific feature of the human body that it can uh, re reestablish itself. Uh, the, uh, these are the so-called matrix. Uh, with these nanoparticles, it is possible to reestablish, restore the uh, bones and the skins in the natural way. So if we take this as the foundation, probably we will be able to move in the direction of cyborgs technology, and uh, probably we will be full size and uh, full measure organisms. Well, uh, we have to say goodbye to our presenter because he uh, wants to catch the flight. And uh, f uh, summing up, and uh, our uh, panel, uh, we can uh, Restore uh, uh, yourself uh, with not only with the matrix, because one of the Chinese guys made a hemodialysis uh, device and put it in his bathroom. And uh, if you want that everything is okay with you, you should uh, rely not upon the technoparks, not the state, and not the big technological companies. You have to rely upon the amateur enthusiasts like Ilya or Ekaterina, or you must rely upon your own hands because the artificial heart was done 15 years ago. It was uh, working and uh, it could work. And uh, at some forms of uh, innovations, 
we saw the heart opening, uh, working outside the human body. Uh, I need the the heart inside my body if necessary. But the American bureaucracy killed this project, although it was already real. And I just want to mention that the working of the certification. Uh, everybody agree that this is uh, the correct approach, whether the certification improves the quality of life. You do you know how it was evaluated? One uh, question, question list was given to the patients before the operation, uh, when uh, the artificial heart was supposed to be in, to install. Uh, and uh, the second questionnaire after the uh, operation, some five or six Patients could not simply fill in the questionnaires because they were dying. Uh, and the FDA said we simply don't uh, need enough proof that uh, the quality of life gets better, improves. Um, so some people lived uh, several years with this artificial uh, heart, but uh, the efficiency was not proved. Uh, the company went bankrupt, and that is. And now we think uh, about exoskeleton, artificial limbs, or hands. And uh, please believe that the existing system of regulations, uh, either in the United States or in Russia, is not aimed at the restoration of your abilities. Because uh, you, the, a patient should be uh, connected to the bed, and uh, at least um, some money is... Uh, budgeted for this and uh, uh, so-called uh, please remember about heterogenic uh, reasons of death uh, uh, quite a number of people are killed uh, every year by the doctors and uh, you can in fact think how to make the appendectomy yourself or what you can do with a 3d printer for yourself for your mother for your relatives uh, some things can be done at home Yes, there is a risk, but according to the official American statistics, um, uh, the risks are one-third and uh, only one-tenth if you use the service of a friend, student, medical student. Thank you very much. I'm a surgeon uh, from Bashkortostan, and you were so fast and so expressive in your statement, I just can't keep silent after your statement. No doctor wants to make bad for the patient. The, the doctor, every doctor knows that uh, he works in uh, his industry just because he wants to help a patient. Of course, the doctors can uh, commit errors. But I am a surgeon, and one of the b big uh, uh, operations uh, for a year I was watching how to do an uh, appendectomy. And uh, after, only after I received, I watched, uh, I watched it, uh, the operation for one year, and only then I managed to do the operations. And in fact, uh, it is not easy to find even the appendix, appendix in your body. And there is a part of... Uh, it is not so easy to make the appendectomy for yourself. Uh, we, the doctors, are very modest, but we indeed know much more than you. I respect your opinion, but don't say that you can make appendectomy yourself. That's why I say that you must have the uh, friendly doctors, and uh, when uh, the research is done in uh, the United States, and when it is uh, found that uh, the doctor made the amputation of the wrong part of the uh, body, and the, all the medical assistants uh, are afraid to tell the doctor that he is doing wrong, and uh, this is a system 
and uh, when uh, the doctor pays quite a lot of time, uh, spends quite a lot of time for, for fulfilling the documents and not treating the patients, it's something wrong with the system. Yes, indeed, uh, it is necessary to become osteopaths and body modificators.